Okay, I will uh, call the meeting to order. Everyone, uh, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of Allegiance. Uh, Ms. Standing, please note that uh, an executive session was held prior to this meeting for personnel reasons. Uh, next on the agenda, uh, Commissioner Evans, do we have any opening comments? By George, we do. All right. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Our meetings are neutral ground, a place to hear and be heard. The Board of Commissioners is here to represent everyone in Callan, and we strive to be sure our decisions address the needs of all, because we're all in this together. Just a reminder, only questions or statements regarding an agenda item will be entertained under citizens to be heard at the top of the meeting. All other matters will be recognized during public comment at the end of the meeting. It just keeps getting better. Watch out for Callan on Tuesday evening. The uh, Coatesville Area School District Board of Directors unanimously passed LERTA pending legal review. <laughs> we have a lo few loose ends to tie up at the township and county levels, but we've cleared undoubtedly the biggest hurdle Good job. and are on the verge of uh, seeing tremendous possibilities of, to reimagine and reinvigorate our Lincoln Highway. But wait, there's more. At our last meeting, we voted to store recordings of Board of Commissioners meetings on our YouTube channel for three months. To watch, simply go to countownship.org, hover over meetings and agendas tab and click on the meeting recordings drop down. Huge, huge thank you to Abby Swan for working out this free solution and getting things up and running. And uh, it's in the bag. We've been exploring different options for a possible plastic bag ordinance and whether or not it would be feasible for our township to enact one without creating undue burden for small businesses. We will continue that discussion tonight under additional business. Lights, camera, action. The Cal Summer Movie Series at Cal Municipal Park continues tomorrow night with an outdoor showing of Hook, Steven Spielberg's 1991 classic starring Dustin Hoffman, Robin Williams, and Julia Roberts. The event just starts at 8.30 p.m., free admission, free popcorn, and the best part, free fun <laughs> by the numbers. At our last meeting, uh, resident Mark DeYoung asked how many Zoom attendees uh, we've been getting, and the answer is an average of two and a half per meeting since March 31st. And it's kind of hard to be the half person, so I'm not sure how we're doing that, but if anyone needs detailed breakdowns on each meeting back to March 31st, I have them. Uh, last of the good <clears throat> news section, uh, resident Tom Parr is almost at every meeting, but uh, he's not here tonight because it's his wife Chris's birthday. Um, so let's all wish Chris Parr uh, a happy birthday because I'm sure they'll watch the replay on Zoom. These troubled times. Yesterday morning, a driver was shot and killed at a red light in Springfield Township, Delaware County, by the armed driver behind him because the victim was driving too slow. There was no indication the victim had exchanged any words with the suspect or even honked his, car, his car's horn before the shooting occurred. Nationwide, there were 728 road rage incidents involving a gun in 2021. Nearly two thirds of them led to an injury or death. 131 people were killed. Someone is shot in a road rage incident every 17 hours in this country. That means any one of us could be a victim at any time. When will this anger and rage stop? It doesn't have to be this way, folks. It's up to all of us to turn the tide of hatred and violence and bring this world back to a place of peace, love, and understanding. Bummer alert. We all love a good celebration and fireworks are especially exciting for children, but they scare the wits out of our furry little friends. And 
for our veterans of war, those military heroes suffering from PTSD, the sound of fireworks can transport them right back to the battlefield where they're haunted by the memory of the constant danger they faced in service to our nation. State law may deem the use of certain fireworks by the public legal, but it doesn't make it right all the time. Please take into consideration how your celebratory actions could be detrimental to others before you light that match. And remember, town has a fireworks ordinance. I believe it's illegal to set them off after 10 p.m., is that correct? Somebody knows the answer to that. That's a wrap, sir. Right. Oh, no, it's not. I have nothing to clean up because social media has been very honest. <laughs> and uh, a reminder, Count Township is open for business. Nothing's ever perfect, but it's our township, our community, our home. We can all be a part of the solution by eagerly <clears throat> spreading the good news about where we are, we live. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate sure. that. All right, next on the agenda, we do have citizens to be heard. I don't see anybody here at the township building. Ms. Denny, do we have uh, anyone in the Zoom world? Not at this time. All right, we can move on. Township solicitor, Ms. Camp, what do we have on uh, our agenda? Hi there, good night, good evening. Good the evening. <laughs> first matter is an ordinance to amend chapter 149 of the county code, which is your vehicles and traffic ordinance, uh, chapter of your code book. All it is doing is establishing speed limits on Johnson Avenue and Quarry Street at 15 miles per hour. Uh, fairly straightforward, one minor change to your code and it has been advertised for adoption. All right, commissioners, any questions on that? And are we uh, making a motion to approve this? You can, yes. This is ordinance 2022-03. Am I looking at the right form? That is correct. It's ordinance 2022-03, amending the code of Cowan Township, part two general legislation, chapter 149-7, vehicles and traffic, speed limits established. Okay. And all that was uh, added to this uh, list was the Johnson Avenue and the Quarry Street for the entire length of uh, reducing the speed limit down to 15 miles per hour. Perfect. All right, commissioners, any questions on this? All right, uh, I'll ask the public, residents. None at this time. I will entertain a motion to approve. So moved. So moved. Okay. Uh, motion uh, moved by uh, Commissioner Evans, second by Commissioner Tindero. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion's good, 5-0. Right, thank you. Next, Ms. Camp. Next is a consideration of a motion granting preliminary slash final subdivision and land development approval to the apartment development known as the Willows at Valley Run. The property is located at 2131 East Lincoln Highway. It comprises three different tax parcels. The board would be familiar with this application because it started out as a conditional use application. Um, the proposed apartment complex has six different buildings, um, 120 units within those six different buildings. You uh, approved a conditional use order in October of 2020, and more recently approved a modification to that order in, on June 9th of 2022. The, um, this deals with the land development plans, which has been reviewed by the township engineer as well as the Municipal Authority Engineer and Pannoni Associates as the Township's new traffic consultant. All three of those entities have issued review letters that are referenced in the proposed motion. <clears throat> the proposed motion would grant the preliminary slash final approval, and there are several conditions. Um, I'll go through most of those. The plans would have to be revised to adhere to the conditions and satisfy any outstanding issues that are referenced in those review letters. And obviously the township engineer, the municipal authority engineer, and the traffic engineer would re review the revised plans as they come in to make sure all of their comments are satisfactorily addressed. And that would happen before the plans could be issued to them uh, for recording. They would have to also um, comply with all the terms and conditions and the two conditional use orders that were issued by the board. 
They have to reimburse the township for any outstanding consultant fees that have been incurred as a result of review of these plans. They have to execute the standard developer agreement and financial security agreement and post security for any public and quasi-public improvements. They have to obtain any and all regulatory permits that are needed. And that would include a highway occupancy permit from PennDOT, the access driveway on the highway. They need a DEP planning module approval. They need an NPDES approval from the DEP. And they need letter of adequacy from the conservation district. They also need uh, approval from the DEP for a stream crossing for uh, a driveway that will lead to phase two of the development. They'll have to work with your municipal authority and enter the appropriate reservation and extension agreement and pay all applicable fees to connect to public sewer. They will be connecting to public water and have to comply with any requirements of Pennsylvania American water to do that. They have to execute a declaration of covenants, conditions, easements, liens, and restrictions because they're going to put the property under the Plan Uniform Community Act. And that declaration I have reviewed a draft of. There's a few minor comments that I have, but that will be finalized prior to the plans being released. They have to execute a stormwater management uh, maintenance and operation agreement as every developer does, and that gets recorded with the final plans. The plans do depict a monument sign as you come into the development. This approval, if the board is so willing to grant tonight, would not grant any approval for signs. They'll have to submit a separate sign permit application and that will go through the review from the zoning officer. Um, the rest of the uh, proposed conditions are really just boilerplate. We did get a letter yesterday from the conservation district and I did add to the motion since it was put into your packet that if there are any plan modifications or revisions that are needed as a result of satisfying the conservation district, then they would have to come back to the board and seek a modification of the plan approval if the modifications uh, were significant enough to warrant the plans to be revised. I did speak with the applicant's engineer this morning and he indicated that he did not see any issues or problems complying with the conditions of the conservation district and did not foresee that any plan changes would result because of you know anything that they need to do to comply with that letter. He does not believe that that would result in plan modifications. So this motion is before you. There are some waivers that are indicated in the motion. Um, one is that it be a preliminary slash final plan. The other one is the location of the sidewalk. They are providing sidewalks along Lincoln Highway, but the, where they're going to be is outside of the legal right-of-way and onto their private property. Um, the one also is regarding the growth rate that they use in their traffic study. We have, in prior applications, we have agreed to allow them to use the PennDOT growth rate as opposed to the Count Township growth rate. And then there's two other stormwater ordinance um, waivers one is the slopes of the pipes, and the other one is from the run um, quality or qu excuse me, quantity and volume controls. They're going to be use, using a stormwater system called a managed release concept basin. And again, that's something that your engineer has reviewed and looked at, and I believe feels comfortable with um, that system being used. So that's the motion. I'm happy to answer any questions. I think I can't see, but I think the engineer is in the audience, and he could also answer any plan questions for you. Okay, we do have uh, Mr. Jaros uh, standing at the podium. Good evening. Oh. Uh, again, uh, uh, very thorough review and analysis. Thank you. That's okay. Uh, again, John Jaros on behalf of the applicant and Ms. Camp was very thorough in her review and analysis and set it out quite uh, succinctly. Uh, those five waivers she referenced are in a letter from Chris Daly uh, from DL Hal dated June 24th to Mr. Stackhouse, so they're set out in detail. Mm -hmm. So any request for approval would include uh, a request to grant those waivers as well. And we wholeheartedly agree that we have reviewed the review letters, most importantly, the recent one from the Chester County Conservation District. And we feel there are no issues of insurmountable significance in those letters will not require any significant changes to the plan, uh, but for details uh, to be added. And uh, Mr. Hal and Mr. Daly are both here to answer any questions if the board had any reservations in that regard. But we are asking for approval uh, this evening conditioned as Ms. Camp has set out and we look forward to trying to move forward with this project as quickly as possible. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, thank you. Um, 
Do I understand correctly that uh, our staff, our township staff, just received this information a couple of days ago? Uh, which information is that, Mr. Chairman? I, I, I guess the new waivers? Uh, no, the waivers were set out in the letter of June 24th. Township. Yeah, Paul, we, I had the waivers. I, we were um, just wanting a little bit of clarification on one of the waivers, but the waivers have always been um, noted on the plan. Okay. Kristen Camp, I have a question. Um, sure. The Go sidewalks, ahead. sidewalks outside of the right of way, is it their responsibility to maintain and keep them up then? It is whether they're, even if they're in your right of way, they're their responsibility. The code okay. requires the abutting landowner to maintain the sidewalks. Okay, and that is that written in the O and M agreement, or it's written in your code. But we okay. can make sure we can. I think that's a really good point, Josh. And we will make sure that the Declaration of Covenants uh, speaks to that and identifies what who the which entity is responsible for that. I think that's a very good point. I just wanted to be clear. So in ten years, when they're not in great shape, they don't. Nobody comes back to us and asks for the for them to be replaced. And, and if you would like, we can go one step further. Um, we can add to the condition in the motion that refers to the declaration and indicate that the declaration shall also mention a sidewalk being maintained by the property owner or the association, because in this case, they're doing two different phases and there's going to be an association. So I'm happy to add that. I don't think Mr. Jarris would have any objection to that. Objection. Thank you. Commissioners, any? Any other questions? I, I was just wondering, how long will this process take? Will it really delay the uh, progress of the development of the rules? I'll, I'll, try and answer, I'll try and answer that as best I can. Uh, if we were to exit this evening with a conditional uh, approval, we still have to await regulatory permits, state regulatory permits, and they always are the anchor on the ship. Mm -hmm. um, so once those are obtained and we uh, enter into all these agreements that uh, Ms. Camp referred to, which is, again, standard. Um, I'm sure Mr. Randolph would like to start groundbreaking as soon as possible. So that was early August, whoever asked the question on okay. virtual land. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Right, thank you. And and Miss Denny, what, what information did you receive just this week? We, we were I, I just want to make sure. On, yes, we were still working on reviews that we reserve, excuse me, reserve, re, <laughs> received from the conservation district. Uh, Ms. Camp and the engineers had worked closely uh, with DL Howe. And if Ms. Camp would like to discuss the provision that she put into the agreement today um, to cover the township. Right. That. So I mentioned that. So if, if as a result of complying with conservation district letter or any outside agency approval for that matter, because they don't have their permits yet from PennDOT, from the DEP, or from the conservation district. When they go to get those approvals, if those agencies require modifications to the plan, they're going to have to come back to you and seek a modification of the approval. That happens, I mean, that's not uncommon. A lot of times your approval, you know, predates when those outside agencies give their approvals. And, you know, as I spoke to Mr. Howe this morning, Mr. Darrow's, that's a risk that the applicant takes. And it's, it's on them to, you know, feel confident that the plan that they've presented to you is the plan that will be approved by those outside agencies. So it's, you know, I think they want to show from their financing perspective that they're making progress and that they are in fact in compliance with your ordinances. We don't control when those outside agencies issue their approvals, um, but what we can control is that if those agencies require plan modifications and they have to come back and seek a modification from you. Okay, so that, that's not something that would be approved within the next couple of weeks. I don't think, I, I'm not sure. I don't know how far along they are with, with the uh, NPDS. That usually is the one that takes the longest. So I don't know if the engineers want to speak to that. Probably be. It always kind of ends up happening awkwardly, which is why we're here tonight. When we're, you know, before we're going to come back for, for approval, so mm -hmm. we'll resubmit back to them. And we did actually, uh, Ms. Camp and I spoke this morning, and I just wanted to belt and suspender it. We spoke to the conservation district just to say, hey, we we read your letter, and we're not seeing any any showstoppers at all. Just clarification, some notes, some further justification regarding the MRC, and and they agreed. Mm -hmm. I don't want to come here and then tell my client I got to come back, you know. 
in August because I have to change his plan, but we don't feel there's any chance of it at all. All right. Thank you. Yep. And the uh, the slope of the, the pipe, was that for wastewater or for stormwater? Stormwater. Stormwater? Yep. And the stormwater system, uh, can someone elaborate a little bit more on that? Because I know this is a, a tight uh, property. I just want to make sure we're uh, on the right page for this. Mr. Howe, can you explain the MRC a little bit better? Uh, Chris Daly is at the podium. Oh, okay, sorry. So, yeah, so we broke up the site into two drainage areas. The western half, which is essentially phase two, has good infiltration, so we're proposing an infiltration system over there. Phase one, however, has shallow groundwater, so we're not able to infiltrate. Um, so we're using the managed release concept, which is essentially a slow release system. Instead of having the uh, stormwater uh, infiltrate into the ground, it just allows a very slow release to kind of uh, replicate a management of the volume increase as a result of the improvements. That's all it is. Oh, okay. And, and so phase two would have a more elaborate stormwater system? Yeah, so phase two will comply with the stormwater ordinance. Okay. However, the waiver we need from the section involving the uh, water quality is mainly for phase one. Okay. And our engineer, any comments on this? Okay. Yeah. And, I, and as uh, Denny said, uh, I spoke to the conservation district today about the review letter and they're in agreement with the manager of these concepts. They don't have any issue with that. And uh, they feel confident that we'll be able to uh, make the revisions without affecting the layout of the buildings or the driveways or parking lots or anything like that. So I feel very confident that uh, the revisions we make will not require a need to come back here. Okay. Thank you, Chris. Yep. Yeah, I live in the neighborhood below that. So I just want to make sure we're not flooded out. <laughs> <laughs> well, now it all comes back. Yeah, that's what it is. Commissioners, any other questions on uh, this uh, plan? <laughs> Uh, Jane, Josh, any other comments? I'm good. Everything's fine. I'm good. All right. Uh, I'll open up the public comment. Any questions? None at this time. And so we're we're looking to approve. Uh, the yes, action. you would. It would be a motion to approve based on the written motion that you received. Entertain a motion. So moved. So moved. Second. I right, moved by Commissioner Evans, second by Commissioner Tendero. Any further questions? All in favor? Say aye. 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 The motion's good five zero. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Right. Happy Fourth of July weekend, everybody. Right. Thank you, you as well. You Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mullen, there's the nothing ground. else. There's nothing else on my report, but I, I, Kristen, did you want me to stick around for the PICO and then the LERDA discussion at all? Uh, yes, Kristen, if you okay. wouldn't mind. Not at all. I'm just going to mute, mute myself now. And okay, next, uh, Township uh, Engineer. Does he have a mic? I, I just want to make sure. I, okay. Is it? Yeah, Josh, let us know if, if you can hear. Can't hear anything. He's not speaking. Okay. <laughs> oh, uh, tonight we have uh, our first item that we have is a change order number one for the bioswale project uh, um, for John Duraco General Construction. Uh, it's for the installation of a 15 inch pipe, 43 lineal feet of 15 inch pipe at a cost of $8,858.48. Okay, we're just ratifying that. Uh, has the work already been completed? I believe so. Okay. Right. Entertain a motion uh, for I'm the moved. ratification to change order 001. Yep, so moved. Second. Second. And moved by Commissioner uh, Kennedy, second by Commissioner Young. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion's good. Five zero. Next. The next item we have is an amendment to the PSA amendment number one to the PSA for the uh, again for the bioswale project, mm -hmm. uh, and that's for our professional services for construction and contract management, and that is in the amount of five thousand two hundred twenty-six dollars. 
our original uh, agreement was for design services and bidding services, and this is just an extension of uh, the construction services and the contract management. And what's entailed with the, uh, the construction services? Just overseeing uh, the job? Overseeing the uh, field work, um, answering any contractor questions, uh, managing the, co the, the contract and the grant management and, the, and that type of work. How long of a period would this be? Hopefully just the next 30 days. The project has already started actually, mm -hmm. but hopefully it'll be completed within the next 30 days. Okay. All right, commissioners, any questions? Uh, residents, any questions? Not at this time. All right, entertain a motion to approve uh, the PSA 1121-PC03 in the amount of $5,226. So moved. So moved. Second. Moved by Commissioner Tendero, second by Commissioner Evans. All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion's good, 5-0. And uh, do we have a third one on this agenda? Actually, um, we're looking to uh, postpone that third item to the next meeting. Okay. For consideration. I thought it was removed, but it, it, yeah, I think. That but it's showing might, up on this. Yeah. So you, um, the bids were open for that on Monday. Arrow is still in the process of researching the responsible bidder, um, so they're doing the background check on that, and it'll be ready for the July 14th. Okay. Thank you for that update. And I, I'm sorry, I forgot your name. Al. Al, Al, you know, I'm sitting, I'm just going through my mind and, you know, Al, thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right, next on the agenda, uh, Township Manager, Ms. Denny. Uh, yes. The only thing that I have under my agenda is the signal service contract has an amendment to it. Mm -hmm. um, they have been, you know, pretty fair with us all through COVID. Mm -hmm. Uh, they are requesting a $5 per vehicle, the two vehicles that are mentioned in the addendum, to increase those price $5. I'll have a great weekend. Sure. All right, commissioners, any questions on the uh, updated contract? It's only a $5 increase. $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. $
Who moved? Who moved? Who did? I did. Uh, and who, who's the second? I'm sorry. It was Lorraine. Well, I have uh, Commissioner Tendero here second. All in favor? Say aye. 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 All opposed? <clears throat> all right, motion's good, 5 0. And the third one, resolution 2022 23. This is a resolution of the Board of Commissioners authorizing the township manager, uh, secretary, slash secretary, to sign all documents necessary to complete a buyback program with Pico Energy for township streets light, street lights. Uh, this, is, this was discussed at our, our last board of commissioner meeting. So yes. any other questions, uh, commissioners? No. All right, residents, any hands raised? Not at this time. Uh, once Did this we is, want uh, Kristen Camp to say anything there? Or? Josh, I did review the agreement. Um, I had a couple comments that I provided to Pico. The only thing that causes me a little bit of concern is the indemnification language. It's pretty broad. Um, and I asked them specifically if they would change some of the terminology to be, not be quite as broad. And the answer that I expected was that they would not change it. It's a take it or leave it form. So um, again, it's, 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 it's a risk that I think is not that significant. I don't see... You know, if you're properly maintaining the lights, then I don't see it as being a big issue. So, um, again, you know, you don't always get contracts exactly as you as you know you want them to be, and I think the rest of the contract is fine. And again, as long as you're properly maintaining the what you're purchasing from them, I think you'll be fine. Thank you. Thank you for your professional input on that too. Yeah, being able to reach out and giving it a try. Um, all right, uh, commissioners, entertain a motion to uh, approve. So moved. So moved. Move. Moved by uh, Commissioner Evans, second by Commissioner Tindero. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Okay, motion's good. Five zero. <clears throat> oh, a couple more. Uh, commissioners, uh, entertaining the idea of untabling uh, the response territories. So I, I don't know if we want to untable this now, but I do have some stuff uh, I want to go over on this. Sure. So uh, as everybody is aware, Medic 93 Tower uh, are terminating uh, as of September 1st. Um, as of right now, the Washington Host doesn't have the advanced life support. So our area would be covered with that by, it looks like mostly, uh, um, Minquis and then uh, Westwood uh, out of Wagontown would, would also cover us. Um, the Medic 93 ran thousands of calls, you know, average a year. These uh, two, if Washington Hose, as, as someone has told me, it could take months and months and months to get the equipment that they need. Um, so I, I think we need to ask the three um, uh, Washington Hose, uh, Minquis, and uh, Westwood to come in and talk to us because I don't know that they can handle the volume of calls without additional ambulances and, and staff. So, uh, and obviously that costs money. Uh, and I think we need to at least reach out to them and have a meeting with them uh, on a separate night where we're not trying to rush through it because uh, we've got other business to take place. But we, this is a looming item that we have about 65 days to, uh, to, to fix. So um, this is probably the end of kicking this down the road and we need to, to make a decision. Call. Cool. All right, um, Ms. Danny, uh, could you put that on a tickler for us? Um, and, and Josh, you're suggesting we just have a separate meeting uh, to meet with the uh, the three? Yeah, I, I would services. because I, I think they're gonna make uh, uh, plans for covering Cowan Township, but that they can't do it without additional revenue. Okay. Right. Um, should we- uh, And we have, we have 65 days or about that to discuss this before Tower Health yanks Medic 93. I I think um, 
you know, my, my initial thoughts on that were perhaps we should have done this at multi-municipal level, possibly us, Coatesville and Downingtown, um, and know what exactly the number of calls from Tower 93 were that serviced Cowan Township. So Medic 93, I was told, handled between three and 5,000 calls a, a year. In Cowan Township? In their service area. Well, yeah, can we separate? But, but separate the other thing we, township? yeah, the other thing that we, we have to deal with is that now everybody has to go to like Chester County or Paoli. Uh, these ambulances are, instead of 30 minutes or 35 minutes till they're back in service, could be several hours till they're back in service. Um, uh, I, I don't, I, Ray sent us an email that it looks like Minkwis is going to reposition a ambulance at the Thorndale Fire Company to try to absorb some of that uh, territory that Medic 93 used to, to take care of. But uh, as of right now, from two of the departments, they don't have the staff or the resources at this point to, to pick up that slack. Could, could I suggest that perhaps maybe we have an internal discussion um, first with board members and before we, we move to meet with others to, to kind of figure out what our strategy is here? Answer. Yeah, I mean, I, I, we can do it anyway, but, you know, well, September 1st is quickly uh, coming around and we need to figure out what we're doing. Okay, well, let's pick a day in uh, July to get our, our, I guess, our meeting to discuss uh, how we want to approach this. And on the multi-municipal front, uh, we're one of the few municipalities that does not support any ambulance service. Um, and they're starting to make rumblings that, you know, they are paying for the service. They shouldn't be servicing other townships unless they're also putting into the, to the till. I, yeah, it, and again, that's definitely a policy decision. And, and I think that the board needs to have all the facts in front of them to make that decision and, and fully, you know, um, I don't disagree or agree or, or anything. I think we just need to have a very, you know, lengthy discussion about what our policy is gonna be moving forward you know, what the service providers are, what their capacities are. Um, you, you know, it, it's kind of hard to to get into a contract negotiation in an open meeting. Is, no, I, what all I'm saying is have a meeting, call them in so we can get what, what their side is. They, they intend to pr present business plans on how this model will work going forward. I right. think that we should do that first and then have an executive session after that. Just hear what so, they have to say. It's not so a decision meeting. No, no, I, no, Josh, I totally agree. Two weeks ago, though, uh, Rep. Williams had a town hall on this issue. And, you know, it, 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 again, I can see if I can get a tape of that, um, that there, you know, were various players that were in the room and, and their message that they put out on there was that they are capable of handling and absorbing what has happened with Tower 93. Well, I'm being told one or two of them cannot absorb that. Okay, and and that's fine. And I, I think that <laughs> strategically, we just have to, you know, I, unfortunately, we're not gonna do this on a multi-municipal level, you know, we're doing it for Callan. You know, we, we've got to figure out the most level way to make the playing field. Um, and I think we need to speak amongst ourselves first, you know, whether that be an RFP, whether you know that be a contract for services, I, I think there's a couple different ways to skin this cat, and I think we need to figure out what our our best measure and most strategic measure is moving forward. And I just want to point out, like none of these ambulance services wanted to, you know, get involved in this. This is this is Tower Hellstone, and they didn't give us but 90 days to figure out what to do and how to do it. You know, they could have been good citizens and said, okay, as of January 1st you know, we'll, we'll make, we'll cease the service. But, you know, uh, because our, our budget is done. We're, you know, September is a little late to reopen a budget and uh, figure out how to, to pay for EMS. So, um, yeah, I mean, I just want to make it clear that this wasn't anybody pushing or conjoling to get extra territory. This is Tower Health uh, really hurting this community. Uh, more than than they know or realize. Uh, and it's just another punch in the gut on the way out the door that they have. No, there is no doubt about that. Agree 100%.
because and what I've been talking to people, even if they want ambulances, they, they're back ordered. You can't get it. You know, some of the equipment that uh, washies need is back ordered. You know, this is, the, you know, this is the worst time to try to to ramp this up because of supply chain uh, issues. Can't even order an F-150 in America. That tells you everything there is <laughs> about where we are. So, you know, again, I think it would be wise for the board um, to be able to sit together and us come up with a strategy. And I, I've talked to two of, the, of them and they're willing to come in and talk and present a business plan on how this would work. Okay, well, let's try to get this done during July. So we're not uh, last racing month. in August to try to finish. Mm -hmm. Exactly. All right, good points. Thank you. Any other comments on that? All right, uh, and of course the last ordinance we had already approved. Uh, yes? Uh, Hey, if you could just stand up. Uh... Uh, John Hatcham. Uh, it sounds like Josh is impressing that time is of the essence here. You have 65 days left to make a resolution or something to provide safety and coverage for the residents of Cowan. Mm -hmm. I don't reside in Cowan. I have a business in Cowan, but uh, it's a pretty drastic situation that's going on with Medic 93. I live in West Cowan. I've seen Medic 93 deployed many, many times during any given day. So uh, I think Josh has a very good point that you need to get them together as quickly as possible, regardless of what the township wants to do internally and hear what they have to offer as far as what they have for capabilities to uh, main, to support the additional load, basically. Mm -hmm. So I, I reiterate Josh's concern there that time is definitely of the essence here. Thank you, John. Is it? John? Thank you. All right. No other comments? Any hands raised? Not at this time. All right. Uh, we can move on to the uh, uh, meeting minutes of June 9th for the Board of Commissioners. Any comments, uh, changes, corrections? No. If not, entertain a motion to approve. So moved. I think we missed something before you go any further. We did that earlier, didn't we? Yeah, we did that one. Oh, did we? Yeah, when uh, Ms. Camp had uh, spoken speed? about it. Okay, sorry. I have a motion. So moved. Move. Okay, move. Uh, well, moved by Commissioner Evans, second by Commissioner Young. All right, all in favor? Say aye. 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 The motion's good, 5-0. Minutes have been approved. Uh, acknowledgement of the Planning Commission uh, minutes from May 25th. Any, any comments on that? If not, entertain a motion to uh, approve that. So moved. Moved. Bye. Moved by Commissioner Tendero, second by Commissioner Kennedy. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Motion's good, 5-0. Moving on to the Finance Department. Uh, financial report. <laughs> Lisa, how are you tonight? I'm doing great. How are you? Unbelievable. <laughs> uh, financial report as in the packet. Um, once again, in good financial uh, condition. Uh, cash flow is doing great. And uh, as well as our fund balance. Nothing out of the ordinary as far as spending uh, or revenues. We're doing uh, equally great with both. Uh, you will see that the, I guess we'll get to the approval of uh, checks whenever you're ready. And then I have some other good stuff. Okay. <laughs> Commissioners, any questions on the financial report? That Jane speaking? Yeah, Jane, yeah. you. Jane, are <laughs> no, you there? Lisa, we're able to get our way. You're, you're coming in, in and out there. Did we lose her? No, I'm here. Oh, okay. Right. I would just compliment Lisa, you know, on a job well done, and it's good to hear that we're moving in the right direction. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, any questions on the check run? This is the check run 48,377 to 48,490. Uh, also including manual check run at 266 to 269. Any questions, commissioners? No. 
We do um, have a question from a resident. Oh, okay. Yes. Resident? Who do we have? Oh, Mark. I see your hand raised. Mark DeYoung. Mr. DeYoung? I'm here. Can yes, you hear Mark. me? Yes. You can hear me? Okay. It's a different Zoom. Must go update it. Um, just a quick question. With interest rates going up, have we gotten an increase in our deposit rates at our bank that we're using right now? Uh, he's asking if, if we've had an increase in our interest rates or interest. Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. Interest rates have gone up. Uh, we have a couple of uh, termed uh, CDs, investments uh, with some of our money. So we're doing really well. Yeah. How about on the normal? Out of the bank. <clears throat> Was it a three-quarter percent that jumped up? Good. A good question, Mark. Well, have it on the normal liquid deposits, the, the normal township accounts. Uh, with the bank that we use, it's very slow to increase. I know, but it's the, sometimes they're going to be slow to increase, so it might be good to give them a push because they won't call you with an increase. You'll have to call them. So. Yep, we're on it, Mr. DeYoung. Thank you. Great. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Mark. Hey, Mark, while you're there, just real quick, you weren't here at the top of the meeting when I, when I did this. Uh, you had wanted to know how many attendees we've been averaging uh, on Zoom. Uh, so it's 10 and a half per meeting since March 31st. Okay. Well, hopefully we continue to raise that number. But thank you. Um, I did have one question. Uh, Sorry, I didn't shoot you an email earlier. I read it right before I got here. Uh, check number 48, I guess 48,398. You got an equipment rental for 1,058 and then a credit of 895. Just wanted clarification on that uh, from Knox uh, in what, I'm equipment sorry, what rental. Page, what page are you on? Oh, um, this is page 53 in our packet, page three of the uh, report. <laughs> Oh, okay. I see it. Uh, check number 48398. That was for, I believe, uh, Melissa Drive, uh, some stormwater uh, equipment that we needed to rent. I can find out for you specifically what equipment, if you'd like. If you'd okay. And, and, Please. and I was curious, was that Josh? Uh, actually, Commissioner Trey Stackhouse, if I, oh, right. if I can answer. Yeah, if I can answer that, we that was actually for the uh, culvert running under uh, Jill Cross and at the in the area of Beaver Run. Uh, we were cleaning out that. We had to get a DEP permit, and part of that permit was uh, we had to kind of stay out of the stream. Uh, so we needed a larger uh, backhoe to be able to stay on the stream bank and clean out that stormwater system. And uh, the credit of eight ninety five. What do they do? They un yeah, yes or no. Uh, unfortunately, they damaged our curb when they came to pick up the machine, uh, and that was uh, money back to us so that we can repair the curb. Oh, okay. It'd be spent elsewhere. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Ray. Yeah. Yep. Thank you, Ray. The uh, check number 48,417, uh, Brown and Brown, $500, uh, the bond renewal for Miss Denny. Is that just an annual fee? Yes. Okay. The, the three people that are bonded within the organization are myself, Miss Swan, and the assistant treasurer, which would be Jennifer Schwed. So okay. each of us carry a bond. Okay. I think Scott was online there. Uh, this is a spare pump for uh, King's Grant, $26,000. Uh, check number 48,456. And I know we had discussed it during our sewer meeting, but uh, uh, Scott, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Is that just one that's going to sit aside just in case uh, the, the pump goes down again? Yeah, that's the, the uh, back. Yeah, that's the backup pump for uh, King's Grant. 
and it also could be used over at Hillview once that's dedicated. Uh, that saves us, if a pump goes down, that saves us the bypass pump cost, which is about $5,000 a month. So we can switch the pumps out, send out this, the one that went down for repair. So, yeah, so that's a backup pump. Okay. Yeah, and I, I know we were spending a lot of money for a temporary or, you know, renting one. That's that correct. Worth the money. But, yeah, I, I, I just caught that. I didn't know it came through already. Yep. So thanks, Scott. Yep. Um, and sorry, I, I just had all these questions. But uh, Melissa Drive, you got a dump fee. Um, uh, this is check 48458 um, And what period of time is this? Because you got a forty, almost $4,000 worth of dump so fees. We are running into great problems with um, <laughs> very limited sites that will take a worse. Um, the soil that we have has to be tested and made sure that it's not contaminated. And right now, the only place that is taking soil is out near Norristown. So as we have drivers available, we've been, you know, we have a stockpile of it up near the cell phone tower site. Mm -hmm. um, as we have people available and we're not working on a project, if, you know, if it's a rainy day, what have you, we load up the trucks and take them up. So we've been slowly getting that in there, but we are, have been desperately working to try to get a closer dump site, but a lot of the dump sites are not taking fill. And add it up quick. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. And I would just abstain from check 48,474. That is just to me, myself, for the municipal authority. I was just circling. Okay, I'm, I'm done with my questions. Commissioners, any other questions? Like Columbo tonight. <laughs> I, I just have one more question. One more thing. Need my trench coat. All right, if not, I'll entertain a motion to approve the uh, check round. So moved. Moved. Second. And we have a second. Uh, moved by Commissioner Evans, second by Commissioner uh, Kennedy. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Uh, motion is good, 5 0. Thanks, Lisa. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, okay, and you have one more item. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yes, you'll you'll see in the packet uh, a memo from myself uh, and actually uh, Jen Schweg, my assistant, who does the payroll. Um, the 18 months that I've been here, the processes uh, that we've had to go through with our current payroll company has been stressful. Mm -hmm. um, we've had to adapt to their program as opposed to the other way around. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of issues with um, personnel changes. Um, just the ins and outs of the dynamics of the program are not working to my satisfaction. Um, it's very time consuming for Jennifer, um, everything from just entering a new line because there's some type of OT or a different project, um, things of that nature. So we uh, reached out to several uh, companies, um, as you can see in the memo <clears throat> as well. We've come up with uh, a couple of um, interesting um, proposals, uh, but we would like to uh, turn our attention to ADP and uh, possibly with the board's blessing um, move to ADP. Uh, it's much much more functional for what we do here. Um, it also will help to integrate employees um, where they can use their own electronic devices to get copies of pay stubs and things that were available to do, but we shouldn't have to do that. It's their paycheck. Uh, they should have access to that. Um, the restrictions as far as confidentiality, of course, would stay with the finance office and the payroll company. Um, so that's not compromised in any way. So w we feel just all the way around um, and, and in talking to uh, some other um, local municipalities um, and also in different counties um, that we would like to move to ADP um, towards the end of this year. So we just wanted to bring that to your attention, answer any questions, and hopefully move forward in that direction. Commissioners, any questions? Uh, I, I use the ADP at, at our business and it, it is pretty easy to operate. Agree. Agree. I've used it for the last 10 years and it's um, 
very adaptable. Um, they're very receptive to, you know, making the reports that we need, labor reports, expense reports. Um, you know, it, it doesn't take five phone calls to add a person, um, you know, back onto payroll. That was maybe a seasonal um, or somebody that just came back after, you know, being out for a year, decided they wanted to come back. Uh, minor things like that, but annoying all the same. Um, I've just had very good experience with them. So I'd like to put that out there. Are there any, any uh, other additional fees involved, setup fees, uh, check They've fees? They've waived. There was a $4,000 uh, setup fee, but um, I kind of stomped on them and okay. we got that waived. Um, <laughs> So it's it's uh, about five hundred dollars more than what we're paying now, but I did anticipate uh, the uh, our current payroll company having an increase, if not twenty twenty three, definitely twenty twenty four, um, and ADP has agreed to to stay at that rate for at least the next two years. I'm sure I can talk them into kind of hanging in there with us that way going forward. This, and the savings on manpower. Is a lot, alone is a wash. exactly yeah exactly yeah. so you get it yeah. yeah now as far as the transition you know if you do something midway wouldn't you end up with uh, two different w-2s from two different companies or how would um, that I, i've out? been through that before so I, I do have um kind of a procedure and uh questions that will alleviate that or uh, be monitored so that it's done properly. I understand that there were some issues mm -hmm. previously uh, with that situation. Um, I don't anticipate that happening with, with ADP. Okay. Is it beneficial just to do it January 1 or you just want to make this change? Um, I, I don't think later? it matters uh, that, that much. Um, I just want to lock in, you know, mm -hmm. the, the price and then we can negotiate that. Um, I, my, my hope would be probably like third quarter, maybe beginning of October. To, okay. to make that transition yeah, um, in talking tax. to them. If I, if I feel that there's an issue, like you said, with W-2s or anything, um, I'm sure I can get them to um, hold on until the first pay of 2023. But I can, I can discuss that further if that's a concern. I can do that. And uh, ADP, they also do the, uh, the uh, tax reports? They the will. Quarterly they will do the tax reports. reports. Uh, they will do, um, yeah, quarterly W-2s. Uh, our pensioners, they will do um, basically all of that, uh, contributions, um, any other deduction, uh, payroll deduction checks that need to be handled. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think they do have a good reputation. Yes. And I, I have a, a referral list and, you know, I can forward the board, the whole packet if, if they would like to see it. Payroll factory local, or is that a national? Uh, it, it's not national. It's, it's more local. Um, small time. I, I think they maybe have 15 people on staff. Mm -hmm. um, okay. We do get the same person every time. So it's, mm -hmm. it's a little bit, uh, it, it's nice to know who you're dealing with every time. But um, again, just the functionality of the program, unfortunately, is, is hindersome to what we'd like. Okay. <laughs> And it, is there a different way to call in the hours? I don't, I don't know how you guys do your payroll. Uh, it, it, there's a lot of different modules that are all incorporated in the price that we've gotten. So, you know, we can still, we can try to do it electronically. We can do it by phones. We can continue to do it by, uh, you know, paper timesheets. Uh, it's just going to be more cloud-based and I Good. guess Microsoft compatible uh, with all of our laptops in our system and server so that it'll be easier for Jennifer to get everything in and, and, you know, make revisions if necessary. Well, if it's easier for Jennifer, I'm all in. There you go. <laughs> yes. Yes. And that is all I have. All right. Uh, do you, uh, you looking for approval tonight or? I would like to, if, okay. if everybody's. I don't have an issue with it. Commissioners, any, any comments? No. I'm all for it. Well, we can uh, entertain a motion uh, to switch over to ADP. Uh, for an annual cost of seven thousand twenty-eight dollars, uh, and and I guess once again, just double check on any hidden fees or additional fees mm -hmm. that would, would pop up out of that. Yep. And Lisa, that seven thousand is yearly, not the rest of this year, right? That's an annual fee. Right? Annual right. fee, yes, yes, yes. Okay. No. Okay. yes. Not, not a portion of the year. Okay. 
Uh, Ms. Denny, are, are we allowed to do this? I, yes. It is on the agenda, agenda right? Correct. Okay. Yes. I was thinking about that in the back of my mind. Uh, is it an action item? Yes. Scott as knows long as it's on the agenda, that's, okay. you're clear to do it. All right. So I, I have uh, entertained the motion. Did I get it? So moved. So moved. Second. All right. Moved by Commissioner Evans, second by Commissioner Kennedy. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Hey, motion's good, five zero. Awesome. Thank you very much. Keep us in the loop. Yeah. Appreciate it. You I, got yeah, it. Yeah, I think yeah. I mean, if there's any quarter time is the best time to do that. Yeah. That's okay. what I said. All right, perfect. Thank you again. Sure. You. Thank you. Put on director's report. Uh, starting it off, meat and potatoes. Police Chief Elias. Oh, he needs a mic. Hello again, everyone. <laughs> Good evening. Um, so my monthly report covers May activity, um, and I mention that because the two most significant things in my May report, which were the serious incidents that we had at the high school just before the end of the school year, are things that I talked about at great length during the May 26th board meeting mm -hmm. here. Um, but I just wanted to give you a quick update for as tragic and as taxing as those incidents were on the school and the community. Um, I guess a couple of good things will come out of that. The uh, acting superintendent and I had an after action meeting and he is firmly committed to addressing and improving uh, security protocols uh, within the district, particularly at the uh, uh, high school campus and that will include uh, mandatory ALICE training for all school staff before the beginning of the next school year. And for anyone not familiar with ALICE, it's the original civilian active threat response training, um, which I thought was a great idea. Um, the other thing on May 31st, um, due in large part to those incidents, uh, our officers went down and had open conversations with groups of students to address their concerns and questions. Um, and that that's something that's gonna continue into the next school year. So, you know, we, we're, we're pretty proud of that and we look forward to, to, to that continuing. Any questions? I'm just gonna mention one more thing before I wrap up about anything I mentioned. That's great. Um, so I guess I'd be remiss uh, if I didn't mention something about the upcoming 4th of July weekend, as always, we um, encourage everyone to celebrate responsibly. Um, we take a zero tolerance approach to impaired driving and with designated drivers and Uber and Lyft, there really should be no excuse for anyone to drive impaired. So I just wanted to mention that and I have nothing else unless you have any questions. Commissioners, any questions, Chief? No, just again, thank. We're so proud of Hi. you and your, and your force. And we're, I appreciate we're that. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. We have a uh, fire department, Chief Taylor. Patrick, how are you? Good. How are you tonight? Good. Make sure this is on. Uh, so for the May report, not too much uh, to call out. Um, I'm always big on calling out the training, um, and I'm very proud of the training we do. And uh, we had two of our newer, pretty much new within the last year, uh, complete their preliminary 188 hour um, certification class uh, to become interior certified firefighters. Um, so we had uh, one member complete here in Chester County uh, back in May, and we had another um, who was doing it as part of uh, their schooling out in Lancaster uh, resides close, but does, uh, I believe, attend somewhere out towards Mannheim or Mount Joy. Um, but very proud of those two with being very new to the organization um, and committing a lot of hours. Um, that's mm -hmm. usually a couple months of, uh, especially here in Cheshire County, it's about four, it's four days and nights a week um, for a good two to three months. So kudos to them and Thank you to their families. Um, Thank you. As also Chief Elias mentioned with July 4th holiday weekend, um, I'm sure many people don't want to meet me for the first time. <laughs> um, I'm, that's not the circumstance. I want to meet them either. So yeah. uh, please, please be safe. Um, 
and uh, we appreciate everything uh, the residents do for us, and we look forward to uh, continuing to serve. Uh, any questions? Yeah. Commissioners, any questions? Yes. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sir. Words of wisdom. Be safe out there. Yeah. Okay, next on the agenda, building and life safety, Mr. Stackhouse. Ray, how are you tonight? Um, I apologize if I'm a little broken up. I'm actually traveling, but uh, I'll try to give you some of the highlights. Uh, as you may see, if you drive through Cowan Township, I mean, there's a lot of activity going on. The uh, Carpet Mart uh, Lomax Aldi building has uh, renovations ongoing. The rec center, at uh, it's now called the Campus at 4533 Lincoln Highway actually received a conditional UNO today. Uh, they're in the middle of summer camp. Um, so they were happy to get that, uh, you know, get the building safe enough, at least part of the building, so they could get the kids from outside to inside when they need to. Uh, there's still a lot of work to do there, but at least they were able to get it to the point where the kids can be inside. Uh, we have a new business at 1951 Lincoln Highway. Uh, Harvest uh, Medical Dispensary. It's now open for business. AGC Chemical continues to uh, do their building addition and moving along on that. Uh, my place. My place is the development that has nine apartment buildings and uh, a couple hundred townhomes off of 322. Uh, they've actually started getting building permits uh, for footings and foundation. They were a little delayed with getting water from Aqua up into their site. Uh, recently, that was just approved, and you know they really should start moving soon. Basically, all the roads, curbing, and uh, fire hydrants are uh, ready for water up in that development. Uh, a couple other ones that uh, have been on the books a while. I did receive a phone call just recently from Christian Faith Fellowship asking about building permits and sprinkler plans. So we may see uh, that development that was approved quite a while ago at 2313 Kings Highway uh, start some, uh, some of their building process. We do have a couple other projects that are uh, submitted that were incomplete and should be coming in front of the board some commercial projects here in the near future. Uh, zoning task force, you know about that. We've been working pretty diligently on that. Uh, I am happy to report that a long-standing vacant commercial uh, is finally sold and getting at least cleaned up. And that's 2751 Lincoln Highway. That's beside the uh, shops at Barley Station. Uh, that was purchased by um, the owners of Kia. And it'll stay vacant, but they are going to clean up all the unsightly uh, outside and, and building structure. We continue to work with FEMA on a weekly basis, working on projects. Uh, you got some of those updates, I believe, earlier uh, from a public work. I'm sorry, can you still hear me? Yes. Yep. Yes. Yep. Still there. Okay. Uh, from a public work standpoint, uh, this is obviously a busy time of year besides continuing the stormwater maintenance. There's a lot of uh, parks work that's going on to all of our parks. Uh, and the guys have been really working hard to fix anything that's broken and, and keep it looking good. Uh, roadside mowing and cutting and uh, boom mowing and roadside mowing, I should say, is ongoing. Uh, it is a little slow, I will admit. We're, we're short several staff uh, and we are trying to work to, you know, resolve that issue. But uh, stormwater work continues. We were a little bit slowed down, again, just because of staff. But we're currently working on James Buchanan, uh, that drainage from Lincoln Highway, basically to the golf course. Watch out. Vehicle on shoulder. Uh, we're still trying to hire some uh, another full-time uh, assistant fire marshal that will also be a responder to uh, help respond and offset some of the calls with the fire company. Uh, we've done a couple initial interviews, but nothing for a second interview at this point. That's uh, about it. Commissioners, any questions for Ray? No, but I want to thank you, Mr. Stackhouse, for responding to the uh, 
situation here on Foundry Street yesterday. That was I, know. I just seen this hole in the middle of the street and, and, and it was small, but it was growing. Um, and you guys got right out here and a couple of residents commented on the uh, efficiency of you know, responding to that because it could have, you know, came a big problem if it hadn't gotten taken care of immediately. No, no, thanks for bringing it to our attention. Actually, the concrete uh, stormwater pipe was cracked. Uh, the guys dug that up. They did repair it and uh, we'll get it completely patched here in the next few days. All right. Thank you again. Yep. Commissioners, any other questions? Uh, uh, Ray, I just wanted to clarify that one uh, piece of property was a U.S. supply, which was uh, uh, it's been an eyesore to this township for quite some time. So it's good that somebody showed uh, some interest in that property, and uh, hopefully it'll look uh, brighten up that side of the uh, thirty by or thirty uh, corridor. All right. Yes. Building. I mean, it's such an eyesore. I mean, the paint's peeling. It's been peeling for many years. Can you stop? Yeah. So actually, it's it's part of a larger development. Uh, again, the owner of Kia actually bought that parcel, uh, which is which is actually a large parcel. His intent, right? Actually, is or or what they're exploring is to subdivide that parcel and do some development to the right. For now, they're, what he's going to do, I just met with him the other day, he's actually going to clean up all the debris and rubbish, all the vegetation on the outside. He's going to have somebody come in and spray paint the, uh, the entire building. It'll only be one color initially, but at least it'll clean up all that paint. They're going to mm -hmm. address the awning that's fallen down. They're going to address the garage in the back, and they're going to address a couple sinkholes for safety that are that are on the property. So we we did, um, the, the people that owned it just prior, we did have under some violations uh, and vacant property registrations. And there was a long laundry list. So the new buyer inherited that. And like I said, I just met with him the other day and set some expectations and he was more than fine with it. So I, I think you'll see that probably right after the holiday. And at least that building will look It'll still look vacant, unfortunately, but at least it'll look, it won't be such an eyesore. Oh, thank you. I, I was looking at it. Every time I looked at it, I was like, oh my God, you got, these people got to catch up with the, with the changes and the, the size and, the, you know, with the development and the um, image that we're trying to project on Lincoln Highway to Cowan. That's good. Thank you. But, yeah, we've, we've actually had some success. I mean, I, I heard loud and clear from the commissioners about a year ago about our whole vacant property. And, and we've been working hard. The part-time inspectors that I have have been focusing on that. We have had some success. We've had some vacant storefronts as well that you know are now occupied that weren't before. And that's you know due to the work of the part-timers and, and uh, you know just impressing upon these business owners that if they can't get tenants, which sometimes I understand, they still have to maintain you know those properties. So. Thanks, Ray. I, I do have, I'm sorry, I apologize. This is Mark. I have one question. Uh, I noticed in uh, my notes recently that uh, months ago, um, the Lomax people had uh, agreed that they were going to fix the roadway behind the building before they did the rest of the paving. They were going to do it on a sooner rather than a later basis. And it had, nothing seems to have been done yet. Um, I'm just wondering if you could, uh, you know, give him a nudge. <laughs> uh, I know I certainly will do that. Actually, I've been having some in-depth conversations with them. They they do continue to patch it, but you're right; they haven't taken any uh, great steps. But part of that may have been they they actually did not get their grading permit, their grading and stormwater permit for most of the exterior work till just recently. There was a lot of back and forth. Uh, they did just receive that uh, probably within the last two weeks. So I will definitely impress upon them that, or, or remind them that that was part of the uh, conversation and some of their promises to the township. Great job, Ray, thanks so much. No problem. Yeah. Thank you.
We move on to uh, the Ingleside Golf Manager, Mr. Ward. Chris, how are you tonight? Good. 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 I'll go over the numbers for May first. Uh, May rounds this year. Uh, this year were 3,411 compared to last year of 3,690. So down about almost 300. Uh, May revenue was 108,000. Uh, compared to 113 last year, down about 5%. And year to date, we are 267, 267,000 compared to 285 last year, down about 7%. But this June has been the biggest June that we've ever had of any month wow. since we've owned the golf course. And that 18,000 that we're down from last year, we're just about even right now. So it'll bring us back just within 1,000. Well, now we're right on pace where we were last year. Yeah, it's been a good month. Yeah, yeah it's been a real good month. So, um, you know, going well we got two new members this week alone so that continues on so it's going well that way um also have a request for a capital request on uh, two mechanical um maintenance machines uh the first one is a laztec rough mower mm -hmm. um it's a replacing mower that was purchased in 2016. Um, this mower is used every day has high wear on it used every day all day cuts all the rough around the golf course uh, the mower we currently have is a has its maintenance issues right now. Uh, we spent about twenty eight hundred in repairs on that machine already for this year, just new parts, and that occupies my time having to fix it up. You know, take time <laughs> fix it up, get it back in service. So um, we will keep the mower that you know we got one. We'll keep the one that we have as a backup. Mm -hmm. Also, be used in the heaviest growing times in like the spring as a secondary mower, cutting the range, things like that. Um, after it's cutting lights, we usually use them for parts. We actually have an old rough mower that we saved a thousand dollars on this year by taking the starter off and putting it on this one. So they seem to be more sort of like keeping them around the part when they're when they're done. Uh, the cost of this mower is fifty one thousand seven hundred seventy five dollars, and we'd enter into a three year lease that would cost us eighteen thousand nine eighty four each year for those three years, and it would be a, a three year lease to own. Uh, the second mower is a John Deere Greens mower. This will be replacing a mower that was purchased in 2014. This is also used every day, including weekends, but only for about three hours a day. It cuts the greens in the morning. Um, we'll also keep the second one. It's important to really have two greens mowers. You can't go very long without cutting greens. Uh, one goes down, have a second one. We can also use it as double cutting or to cut greens faster if we have like an event, earlier outings, things like that. Um, the cost of this mower is 40905 and that would also be a three-year lease that would cost $14,989. Um, we would fund this with the price increase that we had this year that is going very well. Um, $2 increase on all rounds. The Friday fee, which is between a weekday and weekend fee, has been very successful. Big numbers on Fridays. 10% mm -hmm. increase in memberships, dollar increase on all range buckets, and we increase food at different rates on all our food products. Um, we expect if we hit budgeted numbers, this would increase our revenue by 72,000. Right now, our rounds are over budgeted, so that number should even go up. Okay. Um, that's all I have on that. Any questions or have an answer? Of the, uh, the fleet itself? The car fleet, so that we got on Friday that there was a price increase, and we have not gotten the updated quote on that. So we put that on the back on the oh, Okay. How soon can you get that? Because I know that's something that we did want to make. Yeah, he's working on that right now. Okay. He got that Friday, and he's working on that right now to get that over to us. Hopefully, by next meeting or next month, we'll be able to do that. And all these are for the 2023 season, or at least it probably eight months out, six to eight months out on all these machines. Okay. Every and, time. Yeah, so I guess my question there is, um, if you placed an order, how Timing wise, I mean, if you placed it within the next three months, we're still going to receive these units. Once you the place beginning it, of the... once you place it, you're six to eight months out as of right now. Six to eight right. months. Okay. Yeah, from the time of order. Okay. That's, that's what their time period is right as of right now. You can change up and down, but that's where it is right now. Okay. Commissioners, any questions on this? Yeah. Um, Chris, I'm, I'm, I've been one of your biggest cheerleaders and fans for the last couple of years. I, I want to still be one. <laughs> I was kind of hoping that tonight you were going to walk us through a presentation of the five-year plan and one-year plan, but I, I haven't seen any of it. Right. We're mean, still this... working on that. We, we had our second meeting uh -huh. and we got it together. Now we're kind of 
acquire our prices, get that all together, and get that through to the to the board next month. I, I yeah, like, like I said back in April, I, it was March. You know, I, I'd be very comfortable voting to on any capital because I want you to succeed, right. but I want to see those plans first. I mean, I just want to see what's what the plan is. Mm -hmm. um, because I want you to succeed. Right. I don't want people in here saying sell it, but the, you know, I, right? Like we have the, but, we have the plan. We just don't have all the numbers that go right. along with it right now. Right. You know. Yeah, when if you come in next next month, you got them, and they make sense. I, I'd be happy to vote on. Yeah, we, so. yeah, with the golf committee, you know, we got a nice start. I I have to give kudos to Chuck Kramer. He put together yep. that uh, the spreadsheet. That's a great start with that. Yep. Um, I, I think we're going to need to incorporate a little bit with Lisa because I, I would like to see the full numbers, you know, not just the, the budgeted, you know, take right. take what we've already discussed, mm -hmm. what we want to do. Even Mark DeYoung, he's doing a great job joining us on this. Um, but I want to take that, incorporate it into a full spreadsheet. This is what I'm used to with the authority board. Scott, that's a kudos to you. But I, that's what I would like to see. Right. right. So, okay. and we can anticipate uh, you know, the rounds, uh, in, in anticipate the income and, and the expenses and know where we are. Right. You know, I, I don't want to start spending money and then find out, you know, a year from now it rains six months out of the year and then we're in trouble. <laughs> so we just need to put some variables in there. Yep, and we're working on that. And like I said, you know, April, May, they are tough months for us on, you know, we are got a lot going on, yeah. There's a ton of things yeah. going well, on, so we've been trying to put it together, and we'll get that the rest of the No, I, th I think we're making a lot of good progress, yep. so I, I, I feel pretty confident with that. And and the fact that you just had the best, you know, month right. ever, fantastic. Uh, that that fantastic. says a lot right there, so. Yeah. But uh, I, I think it is turning around. Um, is there another meeting scheduled for the golf committee? Yep. Yeah, Lorraine's got all that. End of the month. End of the month. Mm -hmm. In time for Chris to be able to report um results from that maybe for the last meeting okay. of course we don't want to wait too long if right we, we want to be able to things that yeah. we would like to we want to get I, some I things ordered would so like whatever yeah. if we that could be have another meeting yes. yeah all right okay sounds good yes good. perfect yep. chris thank, thank you. you any other questions thank you very much chris. no no thank you what what's mark de young's uh handicap <laughs> uh, I got five dollars. Five dollars. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. All right, additional thank business. Um, I would like to uh, move up Lerda and just hear all about uh, the excitement that uh, Commissioner Evans and Commissioner Young uh, took on. Oh wow! Well, I didn't realize we were doing that. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then we'll go to single. About a year ago, I guess, uh, Commissioner Young and I started approaching, uh, actually, C Commissioner Young started the process and, and championed it right down the line. Um, approached them, uh, some people know, some people don't know, in 2013, we uh, we had a 10-year alert approved with uh, town, for town township it was uh, the county signed off on it and the school board signed off it um, for 10 years and it covered the areas of the purpose of determining the boundaries of the deteriorated areas it has to be a deteriorated area of uh, um, to be a subject for LERDA by the state law so the air, the commercial, period industrial commercial and other business properties located in the TV1, C1, and I1 industrial is what we had back then. We approached them, um, no, well, they pulled out, by the way. <laughs> they pulled out of it. Uh, a few of our businesses uh, actually got in and did very well, very well. Um, Got I should probably look at this because I can really tell you some numbers if I go in here. <laughs> um, I wasn't prepared. Sorry about that. Um, Are you off? Yeah, I'm usually really on this stuff. Um, Mark, I can jump in if you want me to while you look for that stuff. Great. Yeah, tell them all about hey, the, 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 the business. The uh, Here we go. Here's one. I'll give the ones that I have because I have the small version. 
you know, uh, Dell Toyota came in. They are our biggest case study that they, uh, their property tax assessment pre lerta was a million uh, two six six four seventy, and with lerta after lerta, it was three million nine hundred seventy one six sixty eight. Good business. Uh, it added 15, an estimated 15 employees um, and that you know in turn uh, generates earned income tax so I mean that was that they were a huge success uh, the other successes I believe were um, the dental place right Josh yep uh, the, uh, next Chester to County. the um, Casa Herrera right Chester County Dental Arts mm -hmm. and uh Popeyes is another one. Popeyes, yes. And there was another uh, car dealership. Might have been Kia. Um, and then and we had two business. Go yeah, ahead. I was going to say also the Penron signs and the, the sports center next to uh, the church uh, uh, on Municipal Drive there. Um, and they're they, the ones that. Yeah, they. they, they started the process and the school district ended the LERTA before they got their use and occupancy, which meant they didn't receive LERTA for the school district. They did for county and township taxes, but not for the school district. So what we pitched was, you know, uh, we were talking to the school boards who were like, look, here's a simple equation. If 10 commercial properties rate remain unimproved, then property tax revenue remains stagnant and earned income tax revenue remains stagnant. But if 10 vacant commercial properties are improved with the tax increase spread out over five years, then property tax revenue grows year uh, every year beginning in year two and uh, year over year earned income tax is realized immediately. Now we knew that since they had canceled on it, the first 10 year, that we, we wanted to go in walking gently. So we went in and proposed a five year. And at a time when they're raising taxes, we were pretty concerned that they wouldn't even go with that, but they, they were interested and they invited us back and we presented again. And I, I think that uh, they, they kind of bought into the idea that there's a lot coming. With the Willows coming to the West, you've got residents who are gonna need services. Uh, things could be coming to the east. Um, there's two and a half miles of prime real estate waiting to be reimagined along Lincoln Highway. And um, I like that. Yeah, I mean, I, I think too, the, the school board members were open and willing to listen to us. Uh, they gave us a good amount of time to speak. And Mark did an excellent job on both times on a uh, PowerPoint presentation that um, laid out all of our ask. And uh, the first time they did ask us to develop some type of plan and come back, um, which we did the second time. And um, they moved it through committee and, and voted on it Tuesday night as the full board. Uh, now it does say pending legal review. So they may we may need to, um, you know, with Chris and Camp's help, we've got to pass our our resolution uh, and then the school district needs to do the same and we believe the county after that. So we still have some legwork to do, but you know, the the first hurdle we were over and that that was a high hurdle to get over. Yes. Uh, Lorraine, your mic, you need to turn your mic. Awesome. Yeah. So, what I was saying is so they oh, wait, will hold be up able, there, Jane. they okay. will be able to help the companies that couldn't make it in the last batch. No, no, no. This There's is a whole. This is a new do. program. This is a new program. Oh, that's a shame. It is a shame, and it's. It's. I. I, mm. I wish there was something we could. I was do. just going to say, is there something yeah. maybe between? I know we lived up to our end of the bargain. Yeah. Anything that the school district can do to help the people that lost out on the program for the five years. I, I don't think they're in any financial position to help with yeah. that. They just approved a tax increase again. They also wouldn't be able to under the law. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Kristen. Thank sure. you. Thanks, Kristen. Always good to have the legal yes. advice. <laughs>
Good question. Hey, Kristen Camp, could you just maybe walk us through what, what we need to, um, what still needs to be done, just so everybody's clear on that? Sure. We actually started working on it today. Um, because the one that was adopted in 2013, it actually was only a 10 year statute. Um, we would, you would have to renew it anyway. So we um, took those ordinances. You first adopt a resolution um, identifying the deteriorated areas. And I don't believe that those properties have changed at all. It's still all the properties in your commercial C1, in your um, industrial district, and in your TV1 district. Those were the properties. And we also had the list of the actual property addresses and tax parcels. So you'll pass a resolution reaffirming or readopting that map of your deteriorated areas. And then the following meeting, we can advertise for an ordinance to adopt the actual LERTA program, which in this case, I think the school agreed only to a five-year program, but the ordinance will be virtually the same except changing it to a five-year program. Once that's done, you then send your resolution and your ordinance both to the county and to the school board. And I believe we prepared the resolutions. It's, it's pretty much a you know the standard resolution um, that the school has to pass. It, it uses virtually the same language that your resolution will have, but it's tailored to their style. So um, I was looking through my file from 2013. We actually prepared them on their behalf. Obviously, their own solicitors will review. The county just goes along with it. They don't. They don't. You know, typically, as long as the township and the school board are on on in favor of it, the county typically is in favor as well. So what I would suggest is that. We and I, my colleagues started working on it today. By next week, we, we can have drafts to you. We might want to draft a letter to the school board solicitor and to the county solicitor just indicating what has happened to date and what will be coming, you know, in the, in the short term, just so they it's on their horizon and they know that they'll be something they'll have to review. Thanks. And, and just for clarification, I mean, there's I would love to be able to apply this all over the township, but. The reason why it was this, the area that was selected was because, according to the state rules, it has to be a deteriorated area. Right. It has to be that the properties are, you're encouraging them to make improvements to change blighted or, or deteriorated properties so that it yes. encourages them to make improvements. It's the improvement to the property that gets the tax you know, um, abatement. The other thing is that the statute does not allow it to be applied to any residential property. It can only be yes. commercial or industrial. It's only commercial. Okay. And again, the way you know, the way it works is you you know you've got a you've got a million dollar commercial property. You either own it right now or you buy it, and you put another million dollars into it. Once you get your uh, certificate of occupation, I believe that's occupancy. Uh, occupancy. Once once you're up and running in your new state, uh, either improved or brand new, the clock starts ticking. The first year, hmm. moving ahead, you're still paying taxes on a million dollars. The second year, it goes up 20%. Third year, 20%. And until you, after five years, you get to the 100%. And I, you know, I have a strong belief that this is exactly what we need on Lincoln Highway and it's going to explode in the next couple of years. And I've, I've heard some people who are investing in this township that they believe town township is what's happening, that we are the next big thing. I know it's hard for us to get our head around that. I don't know. But uh, we're going to, it's going to be beautiful. <laughs> and again, hashtag. Watch out for Callan. <laughs> Josh I, Young, you're genius. Plug, good plug. <laughs> and I, I think that the other thing is once we get this done, we get the zoning done. Right. Uh, you know what Ray was talking about earlier. We've given you all the tools to improve your properties. I think at that point, we really need to start getting tough on these people who just leave their buildings abandoned or boarded up or whatever it is. You know, we've, we've given you all the tools you need um, to do something. So... Uh, I think uh, after we get this passed, after we finalize the zoning, then, you know, at this point, we're, we're just not going to tolerate that. Yes. We, and we tried that at the beginning of Alerta last time. Uh, and then, unfortunately, you know, with the recession and, and things in, in the 2008 era, 
2019 suddenly uh, we um, we we kind of fell behind on that. And then just one more question for Kristen Camp, if, if you're still here. Um, uh, how will this work if we rename all the zoning districts? Is it okay because we've oh yeah, that's not a problem because it's it's a map, um, and we'll make sure that we're identifying it more so as the map. And then the li the list of the parcels is important because it has every property address and tax parcel number. So it doesn't okay. matter. I mean, we we used it for ease last time to identify the districts, but we'll we'll do it a little bit differently this time, knowing that you plan to change the zoning designations. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi, Ms. Denny. Uh, is this something we need to put on the next agenda? It's the resolution? Already, yes, we are it's already... gonna have it on the next agenda. Okay, and Ms. Camp mentioned that she was going to send out some letters. Okay, perfect. Josh, Mark, excellent job. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's a huge oh, fanfare. It really uh, yes, uh, John, yes, I'm I, please stand up. Yeah, so we can all hear you. Uh, in regarding to the LERTA, um, I know our property at 300 North Valley is not necessarily dilapidated, but we have over three acres and there's great opportunity there to develop it. If we were able to be included in that LERTA program designation, uh, be, we'd be more than happy to take on any developer for joint venture on the parcel. Yeah. And so that's you on the, this is the James Buchanan house you're talking about. Yes. It's one of our most valued historical properties. Yes. Yeah, we'd, we'd like to preserve it yeah, and it needs to, it, do something with the rest of the parcel. It's a challenging property as it's been for decades. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and currently we're not really making any money off of it. So uh, if we could take advantage of that LERTA program, we'd be happy to bring on someone for a JV joint venture. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. yeah, I guess that's a question for Ms. Camp, if, if that would be we, we couldn't allowable. We'll review that and see if, if it meets okay. the state requirements. We can let you know. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we can look at that. Yeah, usually, yeah, we're looking at the U.S. supply places, right. those kind of dilapidated. Right. Yeah. yeah, but uh, I mean, it's a good point, though, because we'd love to see you know, something happen with that property. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful building. I, I would love to see it like uh, they did. What's the place called? Bloom? Out. Uh, I always forget names. Yeah. I'm old, <laughs> but it's it's a it's a beautiful. It's, Chester Springs, yeah. The Eagle Tavern. Eagle yes. Tavern, Mark. Yep. Oh, my God. It's amazing what they did with that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, on the outside, it's beautiful and old. And on the inside, it's inviting and bright. So, yeah. More to come. All right. Thank you, John. All right. Uh, and then we'll skip back up to the uh, single-use plastic bag. Mark Young has his hand oh, up. Mark, yeah, you do have your hand raised. I'm sorry. Did you have a question, Mark DeYoung? Yeah, just real quick, I want to be in all full disclosure. My handicap of golf is golf itself. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've taken two lessons so far from JT and done his best, but he, I don't learn anymore. So, <laughs> but in all honesty, um, the course looks much better. The um, Chris and JT are terrific. JT runs his butt off inside a lot and out with the customers. And Chris takes his, runs his butt off outside, taking care of the, the ground. So um, they are doing the best they can. And I'm in support of helping them down the road. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Probably still better than me. <laughs> I'll take right. you all on. Let's uh, move uh, back up to the plastic bag. Well, quick discussion. I know it's getting kind of late. I didn't get a chance to watch uh, Abby had sent us a, a video. I didn't At least get me, it. maybe me. It was uh, you. But yeah, you're, I, see, you're the president. I, you get I, everything. I didn't, I didn't get it. I didn't get a chance to watch the video. I, at this point, we haven't had any more yeah. update. We want to reach out to some of the businesses and get yeah. feedback. So until we do that, I think this is just a tickler item on the agenda. Oh, okay. I, I'll just throw this out there. You know, I, some research I, I, I had here is uh, plastic pollution threatens food safety and quality, human health, coastal tourism, and contributes to climate change. Um, less than 10% of plastics are recycled, and rates of recycling have not been increasing, <clears throat> according to the Interior Department. More than 300 million tons of plastic are produced in the U.S. each year, 
14 million of them ending up in the ocean. Plastics make up 80% of the debris found in oceans. <clears throat> Information. I know Scott uh, from Wastewater, he also tracks the uh, trash and the recycled. And uh, I don't know, Scott, you still there? I no? think he's no. no oh, okay. Uh, he went on his way. I, huh? Yeah, I wasn't sure. I was watching the, uh, the report. Our people are fading. Yeah, so I know. I know. Yeah. We, we're we're diehards. I I think our recycled rate is dropping a little bit. So, uh, you know, residents could uh, chime in there, and uh, properly dispose of recycled containers uh, or recycled trash for the township. Right. It's an art to it. There really is. I didn't. I didn't have it down until about a year and a half ago but once you get you know once you get it you get it mm -hmm. all right uh moving on public comment we have one time. thing yes oh josh go ahead um i uh was asked at our last library board meeting um if the new library director in august or september can come introduce herself and uh, uh make a presentation so if we could put that on the agenda and tell me which date that is, I will get back to our library director for Downingtown. Danny, you want to send over the dates? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Josh. Public comment? None in this room. Any public comment left in the Zoom world? Not at this time. All right. And then uh, we will entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Say aye. 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 All right. Uh, hope everyone enjoys your July 4th holiday weekend. Be safe. Thank you very much.